My name's Christian Langeter and I'm an equine soft tissue therapist. I specialise in treating muscular issues in performance horses. We're on YouTube now. Um, hi guys, uh, episode five. I know, time flies. I remember back in episode one when we were really shit. <laughs> well, we haven't changed anyway. Um, um, all we're doing here is we're going to go through our TikTok, my TikToks. I say ours because Drew's here. Go through my TikToks, um, explain things a little better, go into a little more depth. We're live on TikTok here as well. Any questions that come up um, are going to come up and we're going to try to answer them. Um, we're just trying all different things, different scenarios. We want to see what works, what doesn't. Uh, the whole idea of this is to help people get to know their horses better. That's the key, right? So we know what's going on with their muscles. We know if you've got a vet problem. We know if you've got a muscle problem, saddle problem, gut problem, all that. Um, you are welcome to send a message telling me that I'm full of shit or you're allowed to be constructive and send me messages saying, hey, dude, what's this about? Um, you know, and if you have seen a TikTok and you have a question about them, feel free to go for it. Um, I will answer as many questions as I can. And I promise that it won't be short because I'm incapable of doing that. <laughs> anyway, let's go. Uh, we're Alex oh, can we Australia. stop already? Look how distracted I get. This is Shock em Over. All right, so today Shock em Over is going to race while we're doing this recording, right? So if you're on TikTok, um, let me know if Shock em Over wins because I'm not watching the race. I'm doing this. Um, so we'd love to know if you've seen the race. It's race one, Caulfield, shock him over his favourite. No point betting on him because he's $1.80 favourite or something to that effect. This is the horse here. I worked on him this week. He feels awesome. Alex Ray is the trainer. Good luck, Alex. Hope he goes well. Felt great. We had a bunch of stuff to fix on him. But this is what he looked like before the race that's going to happen over this recording so hopefully we know um, one of the trainers i work for if you haven't looked at his stuff go check out his site um this is shock over shock over is running at caulfield on saturday today um, <laughs> anyway um i've pretty much treated him we've just given him a pre-race treatment so everything's moving properly um but two of the things that i want to look at here is c2 and lower neck so um you can see them, right? C2, that's the vertebrae up here. That's what people sometimes think is the pole, but it's never the pole. Um, and lower neck, I mean... It's just not the pole. No, you can think of the neck, um, which is from the sternum into the neck. Anyway, I'm just going to treat him and just get rid of these couple of things. The need for a free-moving neck in a horse is crucial. I always talk about a video called Within Nature's Giants where they get a dead horse and they move its head and the lungs move with the neck. So... Free moving neck, the freer the neck, the better the breathing. So in a racehorse, obviously they've got to breathe, and so that's where he's gone. A little bit there, you can see this, a little bit there still. Um, so the freer the neck we, the, we can get the neck, the better he's going to breathe, which means he's going to run better. Good boy. We're just going to let him just go through his, go into his little zone. So, as I said, I've treated everything else on him. We're just making sure that everything's moving properly, everything's loose mm. and nice. He's going to have a little bit of a hangover tomorrow. By Saturday, we're on Thursday. By Saturday, he should be absolutely perfect. So, um, looking forward to seeing how it goes. Oh, there you go. Totally different. So, here's hoping he goes well. Thanks. Here's hoping he goes well, exactly right. Just because I treated it doesn't mean it's going to win. We've been really lucky with Rick's Cafe, Benedetta, uh, Seb Song. Um, I put up the videos they won that week. Um, I hope it's the next one. Anyway, you're looking. Is there a question, Drew? Uh, not a question, just a bunch of support. Lauren saying, love your work. It definitely needs some advice. Um, uh, your beautiful wife, Pucci, has joined the live. Oh, the hello, Pucci. <laughs> Hi, how are you going? And, um, <laughs> yeah, just a couple of comments saying that they love what you do and you've got magic hands and all that normal stuff. Cool. Just because I've treated the horse doesn't mean it's going to win. They still need good training, good high, everything. There's a whole bunch. I classify myself as one of those 1%. And so the 1% things, you know, everything works. Uh, the, as I said, the freer the moving, moving the neck, um, the better the breathing. Again, within Nature's Giants, it's a, it's a YouTube video. 
and they get a, a horse, that, like an autopsy of a horse, and they move its head and the lungs move, independent, well, actually in conjunction with the neck. So it shows that they actually open up their airways and by the movement of their neck, they draw air. So hopefully that was enough to make that uh, this horse here win. Like I said, watch the race, tell us. Pucci, watch the race, tell us if it wins. It should be racing in about 10 minutes. Anyway, there we go. Do I have a question from Facebook? Yep. Uh, when you check for soreness, is it best to check before or after a workout? Does not matter. <laughs> so it doesn't matter. It doesn't. They're going to be sore before or after the workout. So I don't care if it's a horse that has just worked, hasn't worked, is standing still out of the paddock, whatever. Um, if you know how to check a horse, here's the thing. Like if you know how to check and you're looking for sore muscles, they're always going to be reactive regardless of, of what time you check. Cool. Cool. Let's do the next one. Yeah. Right. So this out. is prior conviction. We're at Shane Nichols Stable in Mornington. Um, he's running on Saturday. We're just going over him, and I've got an opportunity to show you something, um, which is that dip there. So all that dip is, and this one here, right? So we've got medial glute, biceps, femoris. All that is is this big bum muscle feeds into the back. It's called the gluteal tongue. It's like it just feeds the in here. So when I run my finger over the back, as soon as it drops into that hole, he buckles, which means we've got a sore bum, all right? And so, same, when I go back here, as soon as I drop out off the edge of this muscle here, which is biceps femoris, we know we've got a hamstring issue, but it's one of the parts of the hamstring. It's sort of like the one we use for like dressage, or if you're really using downright power, this is the one we use. Now, his hamstring is fine, um, and the pelvis is actually also fine, so we're just going to treat those two. So, I'm just going to... We can just mute it and let it keep running. So this is really common. Two of the most common, well, three of the most common things that I find, hyoid, lower neck, uh, bum, and the biceps femoris. That one that I was talking about, which is the hamstring, it feeds into the back of the stifle. So often you won't have the stifle working properly if that one is sore. Um, typical dressage and typical if you're riding your uh if you're working your racehorses properly they should be sore in the bum and the biceps femoris which is the side one which i'll treat next um if you're working them incorrectly you're going to find more the hamstring soreness so it's just when you get when they go hollow they'll start actually treating it well working the inner hamstring was that yep we good All right so by him buckling in fact he's softening this up for me And he's just helping me get a bit deeper into the muscle. That's interesting. So the horses will help you help them? Yeah, often. Interesting. They'll lean in. They'll try to make things soft. They'll lean in. Yeah, absolutely. They will. So sorry, this is a bit of a silent one, but I just kept the thoughts and credit on what I was doing. Um, we've also next all we've got a touch of chin. <laughs> He's been a bit of a fool. So, um, anyway, he's fine. He's just breaking his throat. Right. So, we've still got a little bit of somewhere. Uh, if you have a look at the difference, I've it before, and I'll watch it again um, and see the change. So, it was medial glute which feeds. <coughs> Now I try to say as quiet as possible, as quiet as I can while watching the videos because for those who haven't seen it on TikTok, it'd be horrible for me to keep talking over the video while we're actually doing it. So if you're watching this, you actually get to see the video and get to see what I'm talking about. Shane Nichols is a trainer out of Mornington. He's been one of my biggest supporters. Same as Greg Urell, I've been treating for those for a crazy long time. Shane, probably the last 15 years, he's had horses such as Streets of Avalon. Um, and Mia, what was her name? I am a star, group one winners. Uh, so that was one of his horses. Again, medial glute and the biceps femoris, one of the most common soreness. Uh, we have another question. Question time. Question time. Yeah, sure. Do scars have an effect on uh, the movement longevity of the muscle tissue? Definitely can have a... So there's not always soreness. Once they've got a tear and once there's a scar, there will definitely be a hindrance in movement, or may or may not be, depending on how severe it is. 
Um, does it? So yes, it will affect the movement, or it could possibly affect it, depending on how big the the scar is, how brutal the tear is in the muscle. Scars on skin won't, but in the muscle or fascia it will. Um, longevity, no. I, you know, you're just going to find that the horse might have a bit of a bias. Will it cause pain? Not usually. So even if you have a big, I've seen crazy holes in horses, um, and you know what? They're absolutely fine. They're kind of built to just carry on. Um, yes, they will. Like I said, they'll have a bias. I'll move. They might have a, a like a, a, a weird gait or a shortened stride, um, but they're not necessarily sore and they won't have any discomfort. Raj Kipper. Raj Kipper. Brian the grass table. Now, Raj is a thoroughbred race horse, obviously, here in Cranbourne. Um, we were wondering, he was getting out of his stall and he was working restricted in the front. So... Uh, Sorry, just want to address this uh, TikTok question yeah. uh, before it vanishes. Yes. Hey. Hey. Uh, I'm sure you've heard this a lot, Christian. Uh, if we send you a video of our horse reacting to a sore spot, will give us will you give us your opinion on what you think it is and how to treat? Who is it? Uh, it is Maria McNell 05. Oh, Mac, uh, yeah, Maria McNell. Yeah. Um, hi, Maria. How are you going? <laughs> Thanks. Thanks for the question. Uh, I would love to, but I am so crazy busy. I already get up at 5.30, as Butchie knows. I always get, I already get up at 5.30 in the morning, get home about 7.30 to 8 o'clock p.m. at night, and then I try to do as much social media stuff as possible. I'm incapable of finding more time in the day to be able to help, but that is the exact reason why I created my website, for you to be able to check your own horse. Um, I often hear people saying that they've got a problem with their horse. They had a therapist out. I'm sure, sorry, I should be talking to this. I have a problem with my horse. I have a therapist out. I still have the problem. Could you please look at this? And I get so many videos. I cannot begin to tell you. I can't keep up with them. So that's why I built the website. It's so you can go and like it's not intimidating. It's really easy. I've tried to dumb this down. I, look, it's like, you know, it's exactly how I check a horse and how I look over over 100 horses a week. I'm trying to teach people how to understand how they check their horses. So then, even if you can't do it, you can get a therapist or a vet in, you can check it before, then the therapist treats it, then you can check after, or you can check it and say, fix this right here. That's the whole idea of my website. If you hadn't had a look, please go and have a look. There's an example of what a module looks like. There's a bunch of them there. It covers the whole horse. Go have a look. Um, there's a, like I said, there's an example. It's, it's in English. Um, the, there are videos there, etc. So I'm sorry, Mary, but I can't. It's the beauty of live. Uh, Mar I'm, and I'm sorry, Mariah. Mariah, sorry. Is. Mariah just says, thank you for the response. I figured that would be the situation. Um, thank you. I learned so much from your videos. So hopefully she'll go and check out the website, which is langaderequine.com, but we'll put it up on the screen. Okay. And I love that you, you got that done. Thanks for the question. It's so cool. Thanks. Um, what happened is... I was checking the muscles. There's no muscular stuff. So here we have a really good case of the vet needs to see this one because you've probably got ulcers. So um, I'm going to go through. We're trying to. Um, so um, I don't know. Just if you can watch this one. First thing. This side. Can you see this, the side of it? I'm just going to move over. Um, so How to check gut ulcers? With ulcers, the muscles that I was discounting is this big tricep. Deep pec, which is under here, so we don't have that. We don't have tricep. Sorry, where he's moving around here for us. There's lap here. Um, but what we're looking, so you can see none of these muscles are sore. But he's been protected. But if I go for the armpit here and I come back to rib spaces, now all I'm doing is the gut is here. I'm just touching through the ribs to the gut, and you can see that he really doesn't like it. So the thing is here is that. That's just an indicator that I used, right? And the reason why I got that indicator was because I would always find horses that I thought had a gut thing, and I would check the muscles, make sure there were no muscle things, but they were still sore. So we started, the vets decided that they were ulcers, and then we realised that that was the point we could look at to know if he was sore from ulcers or not. There's also a guy in America, Dr. DeMarco, who's awesome, see his videos. Um, he talks about gut problems, um, high gut and gut. But he also used his acupuncture points to check it out. So anyway, we're going to see the vet. Sorry, I keep poking him, but I just want you to see what I'm looking for. 
Um, it's also in the tendons or a soreness. But, so we're going to see the vet, we'll probably put him on awesome meds. I will do a follow-up video in two weeks to show you that his muscles are still fine and he won't be sensitive here. This is one of the ones that gets me in the most trouble because so many people get annoyed at this. Um, they get a, mostly uh, vet students. Hi, vet students, love you guys. But most people get annoyed at this and say, you cannot check for ulcers by poking outside a horse. To which I respond, yes, you can. <laughs> anyway, of course you can. We know where the sensitivity is. That's, that'd be like you saying that I've got acid and if I poke your gut, you'd be so pissed off at me for poking your gut. They're the same. They get really offended. Um, I use that point to know. And firstly, I, I diagnose by omission. I make sure there's no muscular soreness and then I poke that spot. Um, and then if that is reactive, the amount of times it's been reactive, um, we've spoken to vets. Uh, we've given ulcer meds and uh, it has completely gone and the horse is no longer girthy or cinchy as they say in America, um, is so uncanny it would be 99%. So at 99% I'm pretty comfortable saying that that is a point where you can tell that your horse's gut is either acidosis, lesions, um, ulcers and you need to see your vet. Your vet will give you meds and almost certainly it will go. Um, so, you know, and like I said, I see over 100 horses a week. I deal with a whole bunch of vets. I think they're like, I, you know, I love how we see things differently. But this is one of those ones where I can call up one of my vet mates and just go, hey, this is your bag, not mine. I already know it's not me. We need you to help. So I didn't want to interrupt that one. Yes. Lots of questions coming through. Ah, um, okay. Didn't want to interrupt that because that was a great example of when it's uh, someone sure. else's job. But also, again, back to the website would yep. be... Uh, um, a good way to find out that it's what it's not. Absolutely. Um, and then who you need to call. Go learn how to check not your horse. Crucial. All right. So um, we'll go through these quite quickly because yes. they're vanishing. All right. Um, Robbie, thoughts on blooding a racehorse? Uh, don't have any. That's a vet's job. That was quick. Easy. Yeah. All right. Uh, do you ever come to Townsville? No. Sorry. I don't get out that far. We're <laughs> answering quickly. Don't get out that far, I'm sorry. Um, I'm too busy. I'm stuck in Melbourne, stuck around Cranman Racetrack, Caulfield Racetrack, oh, sorry, uh, Mornington Racetrack and a few other areas. I am too busy. I can't get out. Locked in Melbourne. Accepting, uh, accepting extreme offers to, extreme to, to, offers, to travel like there. Extreme offers, crazy offers. Travel there. They yes. can email uh, Christian at langadaequine.com. Sure. With an extreme offer. Yeah, extreme um, offers, yes. I, I had an extreme offer. I've been offered to go out to an aquarium in Italy to go and work with dolphins, etc. Um, that would be insane thinking about it, yes. Yeah. Uh, I think this is just a comment. Mine has tricep, pec and ulcers. He has treatments with Jew and Row. Okay, I don't know. Don't know? Yep. Cool, cool. Good, good. Get a therapist. Uh, and final question. Yes. Yes. Uh, do you have horses that you treat on a regular weekly basis to keep them sound or what what sort of time frame do you consider regular? Never weekly. Um, if I have to see a horse weekly, I would punch myself in the face. Um, so never regularly. The more the most regular, I have one stable and it revolves horses. I'd say once a month for maintenance. What's wrong? This says shock and over came from last round the turn yeah. and won. There you go. Well done, Alex Ray. There's another one. All, all of a sudden, I mean, provided that's going to light provided up. that's accurate. If that's right, um, it's going to light up my TikTok. So there we go. That's four out of four that I mentioned that won their next start. We're doing pretty well. Congratulations, Alex. That's what a team effort. So do you, cool. I mean, TikTok's going a little bit silly. So do you want to continue with this? We'll continue with this and we can do some of those. Uh one more, yes. just before it vanishes. How yeah. would you treat issues between the axis and the atlas? Yeah, I go for C2. So we're talking about a pole issue. It's not the pole, for Christ's sake. So I, if the atlas and the axis, which is C1, C2, I treat C2, I treat hyoid, and I look, well, I would check C2, hyoid, and the TMJ. But you need to know how to do that. So again, we're going to refer you on to my website, which is langataequine.com. Thanks, Lauren, for the question. Thanks, and Tennille Ranger, just following up, it's certainly won, and it won in super fashion. Fa! And yeah, Lauren I saying should... thank you so much for the explanation. No and... worries. Well done. I'm so happy for him. This is Fleur. We're at Hamilton Dressage. I don't know if this is going to work. 
I'm getting a bit curious. Um, I don't know if this is going to work, um, but I just want to show you. This is a sawdust in the back. Well, it looks a bit more than what I think, but anyway, we'll see. We'll, we'll give it a crack. I think that this might be lax. So the way that I check lax is along here. So we're talking one big muscle. It's sort of like your back muscle back here. Anyway, I can see that triceps not sore, but I can see that we have a, re a reaction here and a reaction here. So that's your pulling muscle. They do this with it. You're going to get it mostly in things like cart horses or heavy going. Um, so the dressage horse, I'm not sure why she's got it, but I would say maybe it would be because of the things are heavy, the paddocks are heavy. Um, and this was only on one side, so it could also just be a slight injury in the paddocks. Anyway, we're listening to Christian who's taking, we're listening to his music right now. <laughs> this never ending story. I love dreams. I love dreams, yes. Should I own that? There you go. So that's not Yeah? So, lucky me, that worked. It was cool. <laughs> um, so, that, if, you, um, if you've got horses that are fully wet ground, just check it out. I mean, if you saw through here, which is my Pandora's box of all different attachments, just check that. Anyway, it's interesting filming these and not knowing whether, you know, I'm pretty sure it's going to treat up because I do so many of them, but I am often surprised when I fix stuff. Uh, there's multiple comments you need to come to Canada. So again, yeah, if you Canada is a big thing. Um, I'm talking to a few people in Canada. We would lo I'd love to come to Canada. Um, Canada, America, Ireland, England are the big ones that um, I'm talking to a lot of people for. There's a contact form on the website. Yes. Make it make sense. How long does it last after a treatment? Until it's re-injured. So um, I, it's fixed. If it didn't fix, I, I rarely tra charge anyone if it didn't fix the first time. Um, but I'm lucky. I'm just lucky to be good at what I do. Thanks, Jake. Thanks, Jake. Uh, How cool is it that Shock Mobile won? I'm so happy for him. How good is that? Could you show some massage techniques that can be used? I know there is a TikTok where you mention them, but maybe if you could show some different techniques. Um, I guess uh, this person is talking about, this is Jenny Hopkins, by the way, talking about on the YouTubes and the Facebooks. Yeah. Um, it may be a little bit clearer. I'm not convinced that what I'm doing is very effective. I sound like I'm really trying to sell my website at the moment, but the thing is, um, I don't care how to massage, how what what thing to use etc it doesn't matter what you use i don't care if you use a red light therapy gun uh, like a massage gun um if you just rub it if you pluck it tweak it strip it like whatever I, I, so long as if you know i feel like mr miyagi right paint the fence if you know how to check your horse and to see if it's sore then you know the muscle that's sore then you can do almost anything to it to help it and then afterwards you can check it and see that it's not sore the only way you're going to learn how to know if you're effective is by knowing if you've helped the muscle. So the only way you know that is by diagnosis, by checking your horse. And the way you check your horse or learn to check your horse is on my website. It is really cheap. It's simple to understand um, and it will go over your whole horse. And it'll also show you if you can't make any difference um, and you need a professional It'll show you which professional to use. Um, for those of you watching on TikTok and asking these questions, Hi. the uh, website is uh, linked in Christian's bio, so yep. if you can um, hit that. And also, if you would be kind enough to let us know somehow, if you went and subscribed, um, let us know that you so, that you did so from watching the TikToks, from yep, watching sure. the lives, so, okay. so that we know where, where stuff's coming right. from. Yeah, so my website's in the bio of TikTok. Um, just at the top, click on it and check it out. Who's the guy in the background? His voice sounds sexy. Oh, stop it, you guys. Oh, you should see him. He's like <laughs> this big hairy dude with tattoos everywhere and big white dreads. Like he's the... <laughs> All right, couple more really quick questions from Top, he and then we're going to have to... instant street cred, just because he looks like he's like lived outside Mount Eliza. Does something like this work on humans? Yes. Uh, osteopathy. Go see an osteopath. Uh, what does tr what does treatment cost? Oh, for me, it's $150 a horse. So, the, for the same thing, for a treatment for me, you can pretty much buy the uh, diagnostic thing on your on, on the website. Like, so, but, yeah, um, you can't book me. I'm unbookable. I'm sorry to say, I closed my books five years ago. I've taken a couple of little clients here and there that I'm excited about. 
Aside from that, I'm completely unbookable. You cannot get hold of me. That's why I'm doing this to try to show people how to help themselves. Uh, the last one's just a comment. I bring uh, breed warm bloods and love your videos. Thank you. Who was it? Uh, Who I yep, I do know. And that was Lady T Sings. Awesome. Thank you. Sounds like yeah, some sort thanks of thanks so much. Next. Last. Oh, like mute it. I'm just going to go back oh, and start. Yeah, mute it. All right, so these are some of the animals that I've treated. Camels. That sparrow landed on my shoulder while I was treating a horse. Koalas. Uh, snakes. Swans. That swan punched me a few times. Little dog there. <laughs> Swans can punch you. More koalas. A chicken. That chicken's name was Necker because it got us elephants. Uh, and rhinos. Um, yeah, look, I've been treating all sorts of animals for a very long time. Um, I've gone to Thailand to treat animals, uh, different animals like elephants. I recently went to Werribee Zoo to do stuff with their rhinos and camels. Um, I have been uh, treating koalas, kangaroos, all sorts of different stuff. I loved, I never thought I'd be treating horses. That actually happened by mistake. I was trying to treat exotics. Um, and Ken Key's a racer out of Cranbourne, got me out to treat one, well, bought a dog to me. And after I fixed the dog, they asked me to come and have a look at horses. I was 35, had not touched a horse ever. Um, so that's where it started. And now look at this. How mental is it? Drew. Uh, sorry, there's just some no, more questions okay. coming through. Uh, I watch you from the... Oh, comment. I'm sorry. I watch you from the US. Uh, I have used your techniques uh, on the horses so that I groom. Um, yeah. That was uh, Tim the Clipper guy. Tim oh, he's Clipper. a groom, right, a groomer. Groomer, yeah, yeah okay. well done, Tim. That's the idea. I am writing a course on teaching people how I treat too. <laughs> Poor Drew's getting Thank slammed. you for sharing your knowledge and techniques. You're an amazing man. My mare has a problem hip. Yep. Is there anything I can do to prevent it from re-injuring so quickly? Yeah, yeah, see a therapist. Get a therapist out, quite honestly. Or get, a, again, use your own massage stuff. Um, it's probably all pelvic, like the pelvic muscles. Dragon Prince 355, thank you. Linda, you're one amazing man with them hands. Thank, thank you, you, Linda. Journey's mama, thanks for sharing your knowledge and techniques. Welcome. He's right so behind cool. you, says, bros treated everything. <laughs> um, I love it. Uh, will you come to the U.S.? Oh, God. I will definitely get to the U.S. Uh, that is like 100% certainty. Um, I'm no plans right yet. I've got too many things to do here. I'm trying to write my course, and then I will probably create clinics for uh, learning how to uh, both diagnose and then treat how I treat. Is this sort of treatment any good for a horse that ties up? No. Um, so tying up is really complicated. There's a lot of uh, magnesium and calcium balanced things. Uh, you're going to have more luck with a vet than you are with a uh, masseuse. So um, speak to your vets. I'm sure that there are things that they can do. Um, tying up is such a complex thing um, because there are so many variables to it. Uh, more from Robs. We need you when you come into Canada. Yeah. The mayor stare. I don't know where they're from, but we need you so bad here. Yeah. It sounds like people are going to have to rally the government and send a jet. <laughs> right. Uh, that's the only. only Let's way. do that. Yeah. Yeah. Speak yep. to the government. Um, yeah. That's right. it from All me. right. So we're gonna we're gonna stop. Um, Thank you guys. Thanks for TikTok's going off its dial. I will try to. Um, you can always go over to. Um, my actual TikTok and answer things on the normal ones or, or send questions on the normal ones. Um, that was awesome. And that went off its fucking dial, didn't it? That's a bit crazy. Poor Drew has been running around in circles. Um, anyway, uh, that was episode five. How cool is that? Looking forward to episode six. Thanks. Congratulations to Alex Ray. Oh, and if you're watching television on TikTok, if you're watching the racing today, uh, race four, there is a horse called Our Red Morning, Greg Urell. I had to mention Jim Mason and every one of these. Um, Jim's the actual head trainer there um, or the assistant trainer. Um, Our Red Morning is the favourite race four. That's going to go, I, I think that should, like, what a horse to watch. I don't know if it's going to win, but it, definitely watch it. And the other one is Jason Warren's horse, Treasure Way. That's in race five. Um, 
check them out. It's just exciting to have something to do with the horses that are running. I, I don't gamble, so I like I just like to watch them win. As soon as I treat them, I feel like they're my horse. Drew just did a really weird look. And you go, he's doing that. Um, so that's it. Uh, thank you very much. And there you go. Number five. Done.